Are you looking to grow your garden this spring, but you, you want to try some different seeds, perhaps heirloom or hybrid? Today, I have a special guest as we consider where to get good seed. Today, I want to introduce you to a friend of mine, Carl Ashlock. He has been growing gardens since he was a little fella, and he clearly has a passion and a talent for it. Now, he's agreed to let us shadow him this year as he goes through his process of gardening. So in this first edition, we're going to sit down and listen from him as to how he goes about choosing his seed, where he goes to get good quality seed, and to look at questions like, what's the ideal, heirloom or hybrid? Join us as we hear from Carl. I want to begin by telling you a little bit of why I love to garden. My wife once a week will tell me, Carl, we need to go and buy some groceries. And so we get in the car and we drive to the, to the place where we buy our groceries. It could be Aldi's, it could be Walmart's, it could be Publix, depending on what we want to buy. And um, so we come home with that food <clears throat> and uh, sometimes we're disappointed because we, we see something that really looks good. We're walking through the produce section of the store and we see this beautiful tomato and I'm thinking my mouth is watering. I'm thinking of a nice juicy tomato sandwich. And so we buy it and we come home and we slice it and it looks good. It's running with that delectable juice. You can just taste it. And then we spread the mayonnaise, we put it on the bread, and we put it together, and we bite into it. And it tastes like cardboard. Have you ever had that happen? <laughs> well, you know what is happening, and we may not realize it, most people don't. Our food is getting worse and worse and it's getting less nutritious and less tasteful because it's being, it's being transported thousands of miles. And the types of food that are growing now for us to eat is designed for two purposes. Number one, to last a long time on the shelf and not spoil. And number two, it looks beautiful. When it comes to taste, they're not really worried about that because the more you can adjust yourself to a less tasteful product, the more you'll grow used of it and not realize just how diminished your enjoyment of food really might be. So I want to talk to you about the way we solve that, the way at least I've solved it through the years. I was very fortunate. I grew up in a home that loved to garden. We grew our own food. My dad was a minister. He, you know, we moved from place to place, but I don't care where we lived, we always had a garden. And as a little boy, I can still remember carrying the bucket of water to water my dad's tomato plants. And I grew up enjoying gardening. In fact, when we would go out and work the soil, I always wanted to plant the seed. And my dad would very carefully show me how to plant the seed and how to grow good food. I especially loved to grow radishes. That was my favorite because they were so fast. In 30 days, you could have a mature radish. Well, I want to talk to you a little bit about gardening, how important it is today because our food is less and less tasteful, but the most important thing, it's less nutritious. I don't know if you realize that. There's a device that was, I don't know, someone engineered this thing, some scientist, but it's called a refractometer. Perhaps you've heard of it. You can take a refractometer to the grocery store. It's a very small instrument and you can pick up a beautiful carrot and squeeze a little bit of juice out of it and put it in the refractometer and you can look at the, the scale 
and it will tell you how nutritious that carrot is. Nutrition is based on several factors. It's based on the sugar content because sugar makes natural sugar in a plant is healthy. And it, it, the more of that natural sugar in the plant, the better it tastes. But it not only has the sugar, it has more of the chemical variety that makes a plant nutritious. And you can tell by the refractometer. And you can pick up the most beautiful plant in a grocery store today. And on the refractometer, it will only measure maybe six or eight when it should measure 20 to 30. I've grown carrots in my home garden and measured them on my refractometer and they have measured as high as 25. They're sweet as sugar. They make the most delectable juice and you can do that in your home garden. We should have a garden today because food being less nutritious, have you noticed how disease has grown? How that we have more diabetes? We have more heart trouble, we have more cancer, more disease, and you wonder because we have all of that beautiful food, but the fact is, it's not as nutritious. And so the garden is the solution. And this, I wanna just share with you how I garden and how I think you could. Now I know that a lot of people live in circumstances where they may not have space for a garden. The secret is to learn that you don't grow like we used to, where we had long rows, and then we had a wide, a wide walk space, and then another long row and a wide walk space. Right now, we're growing things in every square inch of the garden. Because when you have a grow box four feet wide, and any length you want it, whether it's eight feet, 10 feet, depending on what space you have, you can grow things right next to each other because you can build up your soil in that confined space. It's much easier to do than when you have a big wide garden where you have to weed it, you have to, you have to try and enrich in all that soil. All you have to do is enrich in the soil within that grow box. Everything outside can be the grass that you mow or whatever. But in that space you can have a cabbage growing here, a lettuce head growing here. You can have a tomato plant sprouting high up here because it won't bother anything. You can have things like lettuce that like shade underneath that. There is a science to this thing. And when you learn it, when you take the time to learn it, like getting on YouTube, there are so many people trying to teach others how to do this type of gardening. Well, I want to talk to you a little bit about some of the excitement that gardeners, all good gardeners have. And that's when the, when the seed catalogs arrive. And I want to just share with you some of my favorite seed catalogs. I love it when the last of December and the first of January and shortly after the new year, my mailbox begin, begins to become jammed with seed catalogs. I get so many seed catalogs because I've ordered seed from so many different companies. But I have my favorites now, and so I don't order from so many seed companies. But I want to just share with you some of my favorites. One of the, probably the most popular and most respected of all seed companies is this one called Johnny's. Now many of you who garden and who are interested and in, who are watching this video, there many of you are acquainted with Johnny's. And what makes Johnny's so special is I'll just show you. When, you. when you look at any particular seed that's being offered, you'll have all just tons of information about that particular variety. It will tell you everything about it. It will tell you how to grow it at an optimum quality. And this catalog is just full of scientific knowledge and wisdom, and it's worth, it's worth a lot, but you get it free. If you simply send, they will send you this catalog, Johnny's. So I show you this one first because it's probably the most respected seed company in, in the world. 
people from all over the world order from Johnny's. When they send you seeds, you know they're going to sprout if you put them in a proper environment. They're all quality. Everything they do is quality. So I wanted to show you that one. To me, one of the most novel and interesting and fun catalogs, seed catalogs, is this one, Baker. Baker Creek Heirlooms. This particular catalog, and they have even a larger catalog, this probably, next to Johnny's, is the largest uh, operating seed company in the United States that is for home gardeners. Um, they do not sell hybrid seed. And that's a real plus for those of us who really would love to get to the place where we can all save our own seed and never have to buy seed. That would be the optimum of good gardening, is to be able to find varieties that are open pollinated. Open pollinated means that you can save the seed and they will produce exactly what that seed is supposed to be. Hybrid seed won't do that. If you plant a, a seed from a hybrid plant, you're not going to get the same product or the same plant that you took that seed from. It's liable to be from a combination of various seeds. But this company sells nothing but open pollinated seed. And what's so interesting is that the person, the, the young man who started this company, started it when he was 18. And he's only 32 right now. And it, they send out, they send out 750,000 catalogs every year. One of the things that's so neat about this company is that this man goes all over the world to find the very best vegetables he can find. And he's been able, because he goes to the Orient, he goes all over the world, he goes to Russia, he goes to the islands, he goes to places where they are growing food that is incredibly nutritious. One of the things I like is the fact that so many of the, of the things in here, let me just show you a few of them. Look at these. This is Brussels sprouts, purple Brussels sprouts. Now what's special about purple Brussels sprouts? Well, I'll tell you. What you want in a vegetable is the darker the color, the more nutrition it seems to have. It has these, um, these um, uh, special qualities that color lends to it. If you, you want a deep red or you want a deep purple, or you can, in, in fact, you can now get even tomatoes that are black, almost black, and they're just full of rich uh, additional uh, nutritional components. But uh, I just wanted to show you that. And when you go through here, you will find they have, for instance, uh, open pollinated corn. Now, corn, as far as I know, is one of the few products that hardly anyone will order an open pollinated variety. Because you see, they have hybridized corn so much by putting sugar in it that everybody wants a very, very sweet cob of corn. So you can't find a decent, open pollinated old type of corn that farmers years and years ago used to enjoy eating until this man found this particular variety, which is very popular now with this company. They just found it a couple of years ago and it's supposed to be very, very tasty. So I'm going to order that. I've ordered it, in fact. And um, as you look through here, you will discover all kinds of interesting things. Like, for instance, look at that pepper, solid black. Now, that pepper is full of anthocyanides, like uh, things that make, you know, that are very rich. Look at that tomato. That's a black tomato. And they say that that tomato is probably the most nutritious tomato that's grown in the world. So, it's an interesting company. It's a lot of fun to look through that one. Um, this here is Vermont Bean Seed. So we have, we have also catalogs. I just wanted to show you a few that's kind of specialized in certain things. 
This is called Vermont Bean Seed Company. So you're gonna find lots of beans, just about every bean there is, you're gonna find the seed for beans in this catalog. And then Wilhite is a company in, in uh, Texas. And if you're the kind of person here as a Southerner who loves field peas like black-eyed peas and cream peas and, uh, and uh, those types of peas, you know, the long types, crowders, um, you'll find every variety in this particular catalog. And the other thing that this, they specialize in is watermelons. They have just about every water, watermelon there is. So they sell field peas and watermelons. Now, this particular catalog is my favorite for microgreens. I've been looking for a catalog that sells bulk seed. In other words, it, when, you, when I buy kale seed, I want to buy like five pounds. And when you buy a pound of kale seed, you're going to get over 100,000 seed just in that one pound. So when I buy five pounds, I'm buying enough to take care of my microgreens for at least three months. And uh, this is the cheapest seed I, I, that I've found. In fact, about half of anything next to it that I've ever found. For instance, you can buy a pound of Vats dark blue curled kale, which is one of the most nutritious greens, for $6.70. If you go to Burpee, Burpee, you know, is a very popular seed company. I looked at it. I have a burpee catalog. I looked at their kale, their blue, dark, dwarf blue curled vats, kale seed, and they said that th there was a thousand seeds in their little packet, and it was five dollars and something. So here you get over a hundred thousand seed for six seventy. <laughs> And that's the way it is. When you buy red cabbage and you buy all of these things in here, this is Jordan Seeds. You can get your seed very inexpensively. Um, and then, I don't know, uh, I really like the idea of growing berries. Blueberries, blackberries, strawberries, raspberries, they're all good for you. They're extremely nutritious. And the nice thing about it is you get a fast return. If you plant an apple tree, when do you get your first apple? You plant a peach tree, you're gonna wait years. But when you plant a blackberry tree, uh, a blackberry tree, a blackberry bush or vine, you're, you're able to actually reap blackberries within a year or two. And this company, is the least expensive of any I've been able to find. It's an Arkansas company, which by the way, is the place most berry plants are grown. And you can buy strawberries, you can buy blueberries, raspberries, you can buy blackberries. I get all my blackberry plants from this company. Now, when we attended Ag, Ad Agri Conference, we picked up a, deer, a supply catalog for all kinds of gardening supplies. If you wanted to build a small hoop house, you can get your plastic to cover it in this catalog for much cheaper than any place I've ever found. I built a large hoop house in Carolina where we used to live that was 100 feet long, 26 feet wide, and in order to put the cover on it, I needed to buy 110 feet long uh, plastic that was 42 feet wide, and it cost almost $700. I replaced that some years later by getting my plastic from this company and paid $370 for the same product. And I'm hopeful that in time we can talk more about this and educate ourselves so that everyone can have a wonderful, productive garden. Isn't it helpful to hear from a seasoned gardener like Carl? I've put the links to the seed companies that he referenced in the description below if you would like to look. And 
Also, if you enjoyed this presentation, won't you consider hitting the like button? Lastly, if you'd like to be kept aware of future episodes as they become available in the next several weeks, please subscribe to this channel and let's together explore greener pastures as we seek to live life more abundantly.